From the courageous hero of time to the dutiful hero of the wild, Link takes many forms throughout the Legend of Zelda series. His appearances throughout the Smash series are no different, and this is apparent not only in their character designs, but in their gameplay as well. One of few characters who can be said to completely embody the spirit of the hero, Link's journey from the bottom to the top has been a grueling one, and we'd like to show you how it all went down. How's it going, Smashers? My name is Bonk, and in this video, we'll be taking you through the competitive history of Link in Super Smash Bros. Whether you're looking to master Link, or any other character for that matter, ProGuides.com is the number one spot for courses taught by pros, 24-7 live coaching, and loads of other content. Don't forget to check us out over on the website after the video. Before we get into today's competitive history, a brief disclaimer. At certain points throughout the video, we may make reference to players that are currently banned from competitive play. While we understand that these figures may be controversial, we wish to provide an accurate representation of history above all else. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Link makes his first appearance as one of the original 12 in Smash 64, and from the beginning, he is already off to a rough start. Having the second lowest dash speed in the game, notably low jump heights, and generally subpar frame data, Link is reliant on his projectiles to keep opponents away through careful, deliberate zoning. While his zoning isn't particularly weak, he can struggle to create breathing room once the opponent manages to get in, due in part to his poor boxing game, but also to the Smash 64 engine, in which there are no air dodges, no DI, and where Link has what is quite literally the worst recovery in the entire Smash series, bar none. This makes Link a particularly easy character to kill in very few neutral interactions, even without the zero-to-death combos that Smash 64 characters are known for. That being said, of course Link has some combos and edge guarding of his own, albeit not the best, owing to his poor frame data and partially to the fact that he is one of two characters in the game to not possess a Meteor Smash. Link is exceptionally unpopular, and his only early performance worth noting is his first place finish at FC Diamond in the hands of Isaiah, who is widely considered to have been the best Smash 64 player of all time. His tendency to play the entire cast would lead to him securing results with practically every character, and he would go on to get more results with Link, such as second at Apex 2012 as well as first place at Beast 7. Later on, we would see a handful of showings from others, including Gyaki's 5th place at Kansai 2017, as well as his 5th at Snosa 3, performances which would contribute to his holding the title of Best Link in the World. Overall, Link's place in the Smash 64 meta would never improve, and he would just have to hold that. The Hero of Time makes his return in Smash Melee, and he's back with a… mild vengeance. While he's not a candidate for worst character in the game anymore, he's still not great, and that would be apparent from the very beginning. Link, unlike many other low-tier characters, actually possesses a number of exceptional strengths. For one, his large disjointed normals, in conjunction with his projectiles, enable him to pressure opponents and control space through zoning very effectively. His shortcomings, however, are so impactful that his strengths can't even begin to compensate for them. The foremost of these shortcomings being how slow he is. Not only in his grounded mobility, but the severe end lag on a number of his most important moves. His out of shield game is weak as well, which is a weakness that Melee's top tiers are especially well equipped to exploit. In the early meta, Link was regarded as an average character at best, and he would find himself at 13th on the first official tier list. Link's earliest results would come from a Japanese player by the tag Aniki, who placed 17th at Jack Garden Tournament, potentially the biggest melee tournament to ever be held in Japan, as well as regular top 8 finishes at Kansai Battle Ranking events. He notably took a set win over Ken, who was widely considered to have been unbeatable in the early meta. This would do absolutely nothing to move Link up the tier list, and Aniki would eventually go on to drop the character in favor of Samus. 
Link would go on to see a handful of placings from a variety of players as the game progressed, with his most prolific representative being Six, who regularly places well at tournaments in his home region of Germany, and boasts a number of impressive performances at European events as well. Some of his most impressive showings include his 5th place finish at Avalon 1 and 4, as well as his 9th place finishes at Air 4 and Dreamhack Rotterdam. Another notable Link player would end up being Aklo, who uses him as a secondary alongside Fox. There isn't much to be said regarding Link's viability, and he's still widely seen as a firmly low-tier character. In the era of online, he has seen more love than usual, and as Melee is still a rapidly growing game with a very dedicated player base, there's no telling what the future may hold for our hero. For now though, he'll just be a low tier. The hero would take on a new look with the release of Super Smash Bros. Brawl, reprising his appearance as the hero from Twilight Princess. After his brief stint as a low tier in Melee, it was back to the bottom for Link. While he did receive a number of changes that could be seen as buffs, including substantial increases to the damage and knockback on many of his normals and fixes to various multi-hit attacks, these changes weren't exactly what he needed coming into Brawl. His mobility was still horrible, and combined with his still exceptionally poor frame data, this was a recipe for disaster in the neutral heavy game that was Brawl. A majority of the cast simply had the mobility and frame data to overwhelm Link's highly limited boxing game, and once he was in disadvantage, he was just as bad as he had always been, with the same god-awful recovery he had had in the previous two games. While his zoning was still respectable at times, and his normals could be highly valuable on hit, they weren't nearly enough to compensate for the rest of the character. For these reasons, Link could be found in the bottom four of the first official tier list, as well as every subsequent tier list. Link would never achieve anything even remotely resembling mainstream success, and he was really only ever seen at the local level in the hands of players like Kirin Blaze, Legan, Iza, and Scabe. In Smash 4, the Hero of Twilight returns, and he means business this time around. Link would receive substantial buffs in the transition from Brawl to Smash 4, including damage and knockback adjustments to almost all of his normals, as well as various fixes to his multi-hit moves, making things like Spin Attack and Up Smash connect more reliably. In addition to these moveset changes, he would receive various buffs to his mobility as well, and with the significant increases to his dash speed, air speed, and fast fall speed, Link was more mobile than he had ever been. This, combined with the buffs to his projectiles, was instrumental in highlighting the character that Link was always meant to be. Using his Gale Boomerang in conjunction with his two bombs, Link plays like a more proactive snake in Smash 4, carefully placing his zoning tools to cover space and restrict the opponent's options. His advantage is similar, and his zone coverage combined with his generously sized hard-hitting normals makes him particularly scary when he has the advantage. Naturally, he does possess a number of shortcomings, including his poor boxing options at close range, weak out of shield game, highly exploitable disadvantage, and a considerably subpar recovery. These weaknesses would end up being just a bit too much for his strengths to compensate for, and Link would find himself at 43rd on the first official tier list, comfortably in the low mid tier. Weak character or not, this wouldn't deter the Link players at all. And among the early meta links, you could expect to see names like Cat, Iza, and especially Scizor all performing relatively well at both in region and major events, with the former possessing a number of impressive wins over players like Mr. E, Pink Fresh, Charlie the King, and Wishes. With these impressive yet not groundbreaking performances, many thought that would be it for Link, but that couldn't be further from the truth. Link would go on to receive buff after buff in almost every other patch, with adjustments targeting practically every aspect of the character, from increases to his combo potential, damage output, and kill power, as well as reductions to the startup and end lag of various moves. The development team gave Link the world, and it was up to one man to take advantage of it. Fast forward to early 2017 at 2GG Civil War. This tournament came with a plethora of surprises, from the two warring players that inspired the event both missing top 16, to Fatality's amazing Captain Falcon narrowly missing first place in a tight grand final set against the Buzz. 
an event that had everyone watching on the edge of their seats. Amidst the chaos and excitement, a challenger approaches. With a run consisting of dominant victories over the likes of Abadongo, K9, Sue, and even being responsible for sending the runner-up of the tournament to the loser's bracket, T was on a rampage. For many, this was the first time they had ever heard of the Japanese behemoth, and he certainly took the opportunity to leave a lasting impression. After this breakout event, he would go on to secure a number of solid placings, including 13th at Umebura Japan Major 2017, 9th at 2GGC West Side Saga, 9th at EVO Japan 2018, and 33rd at Hyrule Saga, with a career-long list of wins including names like Abadongo, Kameme, Niatono, and Renai. Despite the rapidly evolving metagame and the addition of some extremely powerful DLC characters, Link would end up at 31st on the final tier list, and while still not being the best, things would only look up from there. Link takes on the mantle of Hero of the Wild with his appearance in Smash Ultimate, and he has a couple of substantial changes to show for it. Apart from his shiny new remote bomb and gaining a regular grab in place of his extremely laggy hookshot, Link would benefit heavily from the various universal adjustments made to characters in Smash Ultimate. The all-around increased mobility, shortened jump squad animations, and reduced landing lag on aerials would all contribute to providing Link with an incredibly powerful neutral and advantage. His gigantic minus two neutral air, solid projectiles, and hard-hitting normals with his sword would set Link up for success from the very beginning. He does possess a small handful of shortcomings, and between his somewhat slow grounded boxing options and his limited selection of anti-airs, Link would finally find himself at what many believe to be a comfortable spot just outside of the top tier. Naturally, it didn't take long for Link to start accumulating results. The character would go on to make appearances in the top 32s of many of the game's earliest major tournaments, including events like Genesis 6 and 2GG Prime Saga. His representation would end up being pretty similar to that of the previous game, with T being responsible for a majority of Link's notable performances and set wins. But for at least the first couple of months, Salem would go on to make a couple of impressive showings as well, with his Link boasting set wins over the likes of Cosmos, Dark Wizzy, and Mr. E. After he phased his Link out and moved on to Snake, the ball was entirely in T's court again, and he would not disappoint. T would go on to dominate his home region of Japan, where he would regularly top 32 major events with set wins over practically the entire Japanese power ranking, including big names such as Sakurai, Shuton, T, and many more. As is common with Japanese players, he doesn't travel all that often, but when he does, he never disappoints, and his performances at international events are just as, if not more impressive than his performances in Japan. From his 17th place finish at Prime Saga to his 5th place at 2GG Congo Saga, two events where he would go on to secure wins over Mars and DeBuzz respectively, no Link players have been able to make a name for themselves as successfully as T has. Smash Ultimate is still a growing game, however, and there will always be opportunities for new talent to arise at any moment, not to mention the many capable Links that can already hold their own as regional threats, including the likes of Vins and Otakuni. History is still being made as we speak, and we can only wait to see where the hard work of these players and the ever-expanding nature of the meta will take us. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, Smashers! Now that we've taken you through every iteration of Link and Smash, which one do you think is the coolest? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe and click that bell so you can be notified when we upload new videos. That's all, and we'll see you guys in the next video.